Welcome to my lecture online. Here's a very, very interesting example. What happens at the top of a trajectory? For example, an object is being thrown up at an angle, and by the time it reaches the very top, what is actually going on there? What is happening with the velocity of the object, and what is happening with the kinetic energy of the object? Well, we know that in a trajectory, when you have an object that's moving in a parabolic path like that, the velocity in the x-direction will always be constant. However, the velocity in the y-direction is constantly changing. Notice that as the object reaches its maximum height right here, the velocity in the y-direction will decrease, 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 until it reaches zero, and then the velocity will begin to increase in the negative direction. So how do we want to look at that? Well, let's try to analyze what's really going on. We can say that the acceleration in the x-direction must be zero because we know that the velocity in the x-direction equals a constant. So we know that the velocity is never changing, acceleration therefore must be zero. But we know that in the y-direction, the acceleration is always g, the acceleration due to gravity, which is a minus 9.8 meters per second square. In other words, during its entire path, the object is accelerating in the y-direction at a minus 9.8 meters per second square, and that is a constant that never changes. And since the acceleration in the y-direction can be defined as a derivative with respect to time of the velocity in the y-direction, we then know that the acceleration, and therefore the velocity, is always changing at minus 9.8 meters per second square. So we can say that there's no point where the velocity is not changing. Even at the very top, we know the velocity is changing, and since the velocity is changing, we therefore know that the kinetic energy must be changing as well, even at the very top. Because we know that the kinetic energy is a function of velocity, and if the velocity is changing, the kinetic energy must be changing. So the kinetic energy is changing throughout its entire path. But what if we ask the question, is the velocity in the y direction zero at the very top? Well, it seems like it should be because we know that it's, it has a positive velocity on the way up and a negative velocity on the way down. So there must be some point where the velocity is neither going up or going down and therefore it's zero. But that's kind of an interesting question because what if we look at it this way? If we let t sub naught be the time at the very top, then if we are just a fraction of a second before that time, the object should be moving upward, so we have a positive velocity. And a fraction of a second after that time, the object should be going down, which means a negative velocity. So if we look at the velocity of the object in the y direction, a time equals t minus one one thousand of a second, we can say that the velocity is still positive, still going upward. What if we look at it, one millionth of a second before it reaches the very top. Again, it should still be moving upward. We can say that the velocity is positive and still moving upward. What if we look at the velocity one billion of a second before it reaches the very top? Well, it's still going upward, so the velocity in the y direction is still going to be upward in the positive direction. What if we look at it 1 times 10 to the minus 100 of a second prior to reaching the very top. Well, you haven't reached the top yet, so that means the velocity should still be moving upward. Very, very small amount, but it should still be going upward. And then, if we look at the velocity in the y direction of the object, 1, one times 10 to the minus 100 second after it has reached the top, so now it's on the way down, now we know the velocity is downward. We can make this number as small as we want. We'll never get to a point where the velocity will be zero, except when we'll write it like this, in the limit as t approaches t sub naught. When the time becomes equal to t sub naught, v sub y, the velocity in the, in the y direction, at that point will be equal to zero. But in a practical sense, is it ever really zero? Well, since you make this number as small as you want, and 1 times 10 to the minus 100 is an extremely small amount of time, and it's still either going up or down, whether or not it's before or after that event, when it reaches the very top, you can say that, in a practical sense, the velocity is never really zero. It's more of a mathematical concept, 
and not really a physical concept. But in mathematics, we can say when we reach the limit, as t goes to t sub naught, there'll be this momentary time, a very minuscule time, when the delta t reaches zero, when there's basically no differentiation in time, at that point, the velocity has to be zero. It's more of a mathematical thing, it's not really a physical thing, because in the real physical world, it never is zero, because the amount of time that is at zero is actually infinitely small. And that's how we can look at what happens at the very top of a trajectory.